Greetings, here is your daily walk through the scripture for March the 4th. Uh, your readings for today would have taken you to Numbers chapter 4 and 5, Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 37, Psalm 48, 1 through 14, and Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26. Now, um, this is, I will confess to you in my heart, one of my least favorite verses because it, it, it makes me a little sad, but at the same time, there's also a beautiful picture here uh, and an idea of, of hope. Okay, so in Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 37, uh, 37, the Sadducees are once again continuing their testing of Jesus, okay? And so they ask him a question uh, because now the Sadducees, just as a side note here, the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection, okay? They don't believe in that. So when they're testing Jesus with this question, basically they're trying to show the ludicrousness of the resurrection. Uh, well, the tables get turned. Sadducees came to him and they asked him a question and they gave him a scenario where it says that so that this is a kinsman redeemer thing. We've we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but the idea of a kinsman redeemer is that if a uh, if a man was to pass away and he had no children but he was married, the responsibility to take care of this woman would fall on his next closest male relative. Okay, this is a kinsman redeemer type thing. So in this case, a brother. So if he dies, then it's the brother's obligation to marry this woman and to have children with her. And those children, though, would be the dead husbands. They would be his. They wouldn't be the brothers. So it's a little weird. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, so on that premise, here's where the Sadducees come to Jesus and they say, hey, Moses wrote that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but leaves no children, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Okay, there were seven brothers. And this one, the oldest got married, he died, so the wife then fell to the next brother, while well, the next brother died, and then it fell to the next brother, and the next brother, so on and so forth. So basically they're creating this really ridiculous scenario. And then they're asking the question, who will this woman be married to in, after the resurrection? Because, again, these guys didn't believe in resurrection. And so then Jesus totally just messes them up here. It says, is this not the reason that you're wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Okay, this is a pretty deep statement here. Now, first of all, this is why it makes me sad, because I love my wife, and I would love the idea of spending eternity with her. I'm not sure she would agree with that idea, but uh, it makes me a little sad to think that I won't be married to her in heaven. Um, but there's a hope that's in this as well. Okay, now also the theological thing on this also you should say is that it, angels, angels do not uh, marry, angels don't procreate, angels don't work like that. But you have to go all the way back to the, the idea of marriage and what marriage represents to better understand what Jesus is saying here. Okay? Now, marriage was uh, created for us with the idea of procreation. In other words, it was for, uh, for relationship, for partnership, perfect partnership. It was not good for man to be alone. And then God said it was for you to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, so that's the purpose of marriage. When we get into heaven, we have perfect companionship. Okay, meaning that our relationships are going to be absolutely perfect and there will be an entire world of followers of Christ who are perfect and are beautiful and you have perfect relationship with. So that purpose of marriage is not there. Okay, the second part is, is that obviously we will no longer need to have babies in heaven. Okay, that's that's just not necessary. It's not going to happen. So the idea and the need of marriage is not there. But there's a symbolic and beautiful aspect of marriage that we need to look at, and this is where the hope comes in, and that is this. Marriage is very much a representation of the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, The union and the love that is expressed in a marriage, and this includes the, 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 the sexual aspect of it, all of these things are beautiful representation of the perfect love that God has for us. Now, obviously, our marriages aren't perfect. Our love for in our marriages isn't perfect. But it's the closest thing that we have on this planet. So when we look at the relationship between the husband and wife and the symbiotic relationship, uh, the, the sacrificial relationship, uh, the, 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 all of the attributes of love that are supposed to be expressed within marriage, we get a better idea of God's relationship. 
when we get into heaven, we are going to have a relationship with him like we've never had before. It's going to be a beautiful restoration of the original intent of the garden. And so that's why marriage is not going to be happening in heaven. Uh, so, you know, enjoy it while you have it here, but look forward to the new dynamic and the beautiful new relationship that we will have on the other side of this earth. Okay, that's it for today. Have a blessed day.